What's up guys? Welcome back to the ASAP Automotive channel and today we're going to be dealing with adjustable throw out bearing for our LS swap. Alright guys, so we got the transmission back off the motor and what we've got now is we've got our new adjustable throw out bearing um, threaded all the way in so it's completely collapsed and we've got our um, our fork on here and we've got we've got the retaining clip all in and all that so we're gonna go ahead and pull this all the way back we're gonna go ahead and set the transmission back on the motor and then what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure our distance here and figure out how to get our 1 8 of an inch air gap that we need from this to the fingers here in the clutch so you don't want to run this all the way out to where it's touching against the fingers because as the clutch disc wears, these fingers go out even more than you're going to have where the constantly the clutch is partially released and not all the way engaged and it's going to just very quickly wear itself out. So that's why you have the air gap. So we're going to go ahead and set this back on and we'll go ahead and show you how to figure out your air gap distance. All right. So we got our transmission bolted back up to the, uh, the engine. You don't have to get crazy. Just throw a couple of bolts or nuts on there or whatever on your studs and kind of snug it down so you don't really have any more gap. So what we've done is we've pulled the, um, the fork all the way back. You don't want to pull too hard because you can pull the other end out of that uh, retaining ball over there. So right now we're at right at about uh, 11 and 3 quarters of an inch coming straight across here. It should be there we go okay um yeah we're right at 11 and three quarters i'm doing it with this ruler this way because this end is round and it fits much better into the the socket end of this so um we're at 11 and three quarters what we're going to do is push it all the way till it engages and that gives us right at nine and five eighths so we're going to figure out that distance between those and take that measurement and put it in our calculation here in just a second. All right, so I had it a little bit backwards because of the way the ruler was, but it worked much better with the bevel in. So take 11 and what, three quarters and minus nine and five eighths, you end up with a, with a decimal is 2.125. Um, and, and you want it in decimals rather than, um, than fractions to work with this equation. So we know our throw is 2.125 inches now. So now what we gotta do is we'll go ahead and pull this back off. We're going to take our measurement as to the total height of this right here, the length of the bearing, and we'll get that measurement. So we can go ahead and plug in our calculation and figure out how far we need to run it out to get our proper air gap. So, all right guys, so we got our, our distance of throw, which is 2.125 inches. So we went ahead and we're going to go ahead and measure the full length, I guess you could say full height of our um, throwout bearing at full rest. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, let's zero it out. We're going to measure here, get us a good surface. And we're going to end up, uh, let's see, right around 1.630. So we're going to take that, and what we're going to do here, I think I give you guys a visual on the, the calculation here. So there's our our throw, our travel throw, which you know that's not ours, but this is just an example. Uh, the lever ratio on this is two because it's even on both sides. It's a one, pretty much a one to one. Um, air gap allowance, finger rise allowance and then the test bearing overall length. So what we're gonna do is take our 2.125, divide it by two, then we're going to subtract the, uh, the two air gaps, add our actual height of our bearing as it is now, and that will give us what we actually need to go to. So I'm gonna do that calculation real quick and we'll get you that number. Cool, so now we got it back on. Um, throw feels a lot better. We've got about, that gives us right about our eighth of an inch there where we want. So 
That's actually the simple calculation, guys. So when you buy this adjustable throwout bearing from Novak, um, which I highly recommend if you're going this route with their adapter plate and all that, um, there's, there's different types to whether it's got the exposed arm um, or, um, a, or the internal slave cylinder, which um, you wouldn't need on this one. But um, anyways, there's like two or three different other ones and the calculations are way harder. So believe it or not, that's actually the simple one. So that being said, we've got it adjusted out. Now what we're gonna do, um, we know it's where we want it to be with throw wise. So we're gonna pull the transmission back off again and we're gonna go ahead and grease a couple of points on it um, after we go ahead and put our lock pins in and then we'll go ahead and put the trans back on for the final time. So that being said, this is a lot easier to do right now than when you got it in the vehicle. Granted, when you got it in the vehicle, yes, you can hook up the slave cylinder and all that and give you kind of good feel, but if you go by this calculation, you, you should have the proper air gap and you should be fine. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and snatch it back off and we'll go ahead and work on getting our lock pins in. All right guys, so we got our measurement and everything. We know how the height needs to be. And before we put our pins in, I did forget to mention, we need to, get, um, this kit actually comes with a little bit of blue Loctite. So what you wanna do is to help with this walking back and forth or anything, the pins really do, but just add, added a little bit of extra measure, put you some Loctite on there. Uh, let's see, I went ahead and shook this up so it should be, wow, there's really not much in there at all. There we go, okay. You don't need a whole lot, it's enough, and that'll carry down the thread. So, go ahead and thread that back in there, like you know. Thread that in there. such a bad but okay go ahead and double check our measurement again pretty darn close all right so the loctite does a little bit to help you know the inner inner part moving and all that but what else we're going to do is go ahead and run these lock pins in and they're going to go right on down into here. Yeah, not down there. And goes right into this groove down here. So I'll lock them in place. So we'll go ahead and do that next. All right, so we got it locked in with the pins. We got them cut off flush. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and lubricate it a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of this red high temp grease. And if you'll notice in here, there's a couple little channels in the the body itself that we're going to go ahead and rub a little bit of grease in there you don't want to get crazy um you don't want this splooge out and get all over the friction disc or anything like that but you need just a little bit on there so it doesn't stick on you and we're going to put a little bit on these contact pads where it meets the fork so and that's about all you need right there it's nice to get a little film on it so Keep it nice and lubricated. You get too much on there, like I said, it'll guaranteed it's going to find its way out onto your friction disc and you're going to have a bad day. All right, and same there, just a little bit on there. Don't need a whole lot. Go ahead and clean that off. So go ahead, put it back on. And, um, well, wouldn't hurt to put a little bit on the um, pivot point too, I guess. Not really gonna matter, but there's a little bit on there. Now we can finally put this thing in for the last time. All 
All right, so we got the throwout bearing and the, um, the fork and all that greased up, ready to go back in. Got our transmission mounted back up. We got our socket head bolts uh, with our lock washers, put a little bit of blue Loctite on them. We're gonna run around and torque them down to 30 foot pounds and we'll be good to go. And we'll be able to go do one of the next. All right guys, and that's it. That's adjusting out your throwout bearing on this particular application. Now, like I said, this is specifically for mounting it to the, uh, the LS with the um, NV3550 transmission. You got a different, like a GM type transmission or something like that, yours is gonna be different, but that's for that in particular. So, that being said, we're ready to go ahead and move on to the next part of hanging our transfer case back on and putting this drivetrain back in this bad boy. So, until then, remember, stock is not an option. Thank you.